Steve Hallberg joining us, segment, uh, Second Amendment attorney and scholar with us on the uh, program this afternoon. Steve, thank you, sir, for your time today. So glad to be on the show, Cam. I'm glad to have you here. Um, Washington, D.C., in disarray in a whole lot of ways, I think. Uh, not just the Obama administration, but down there at the city government, you've got officials who are trying to figure out what to do. They were told by a federal judge that their ban on the carrying of firearms infringes uh, Americans' right to keep and bear arms. And so they go back and they make it as hard as possible to to, to, to theoretically get a concealed carry license. Uh, and this same judge, Steve, has uh, it sounds like he's kind of fed up with this, um, considering whether to hold the city in contempt of court over the uh, their, their revised law. That's right, Cam. I mean, the story begins with this decision in which he plainly said that every citizen who's law-abiding has a right to bear arms um, and basically ordered them pursuant to other decisions that were from Arizona. The Peruta decision about California and then the uh, Moore versus Madigan decision in Illinois. You've got to make carry permits available to law-abiding people in general and not just a very small select few. So first D.C. came back and said, you're all wrong, Judge, and here's all the reasons why. And, of course, they were just given the same reasons they argued before, so that he dismissed those arguments. And then the, the plaintiffs filed a motion to show cause what D.C. should not be held in contempt because the temporary legislation that it enacted was the same old, same old kind of stuff, that nobody gets a permit to carry uh, with the exception of a very small number of people. Of course, none have been issued. There's been several people who've applied, but none have been issued, and, and probably they won't be issued to much of anybody because they're not recognizing the the wish for self-defense to be a valid reason. You have to be uh, like threatened with murder, and the murderers have to be following you around day by day, and uh, virtually speaking. So basically, uh, Judge Scullin gave the district until December the 4th to file an uh, answer, a response to the motion to show cause why it should not be held in contempt of court. So <laughs> this is... Um... Uh, if if you're DC, Steve, um, uh, you know what 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 are you thinking about doing? I mean, how will they respond here? I, I suppose the argument is going to be basically making their case again. I, I you know I, I guess their argument is going to be, look, we're a we're a special case. Uh, we're we're unlike other cities in the uh, the country. So even if this right uh, does exist, it shouldn't apply here. I mean, what can they say that they haven't already said before <laughs> at this point? Not not much. I mean that. Those arguments were made in, in D.C. versus Heller, and the Supreme Court rejected all of them. It was their unique status as the nation's capital and all that. Um, but And they said the same thing before in terms of not recognizing the right to bear arms in, in this very case, Palmer versus D.C. Uh, there aren't any, any new arguments. They keep making the same ones. Uh, what they'll say, basically, is that uh, we're exempt from the Second Amendment, <laughs> I mean, uh, they've, they've got the case on appeal at the same time. So at the same time, this contempt proceeding moves forward. Uh, they are in the D.C. Circuit as well. And so, you know, if, if the judge holds them in contempt, uh, that could happen, or he could grant them a stay pending the appeal. Uh, or if they're held in contempt, they could appeal that to the D.C. Circuit. Um, I mean, they're used to getting away with whatever they want to get away with, and um, and, and, and even when they're told their handgun ban was ill, you know how they came back and made made any kind of gun ownership even harder than it was before. So they'll, they'll continue their shenanigans, but uh, but certainly this judge so far has been a real refreshing um, uh, newcomer to the scene in terms of of uh, invalidating clearly valid constitutionally uh, constitutional infringements in terms of Second Amendment rights. Steve, what would a uh, what would a contempt ruling mean for the city uh, and and for the uh, the carry laws? That that's unclear. I mean, it, it could mean that this, the district could be fined. There are contempt proceedings when people are put in jail. Um, I would be surprised if that happened here. But um, I mean, who are they going to put in jail? The mayor or the D.C. Council? It's the D.C. Council that that has enacted the temporary legislation. Um, it, it's it's not an easy solution. I think just being found in contempt would mean a lot. Although 
I uh, think uh, the House of Representatives found Eric Holder in criminal contempt, and that didn't seem to phase him too much. Right. Well, you're right. I mean, it, it didn't seem to phase him. However, uh, it did start the lawsuit, and that lawsuit now continues. And we've seen, uh, of actually on Election Day this uh, this month, we saw the Justice Department uh, hand over, was it some 64,000 pages worth of documents to the uh, House Oversight and Government Reform Committee? So, I mean, it, it's not that it, it uh, was completely... Uh, you know, like a, a lash with a wet noodle, yeah, no, you know, to no, a, yeah, somebody who's done something wrong. It, 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 it has it's more of an impact than that. A very certainly. strong um, moral message, I think, uh, a message about civic duties and responsibilities, and and the fact that you, you just can't get away consistently with violating people's constitutional rights. And we've seen this again from not just DC but from Chicago as well in the aftermath of the McDonald decision, they go and they, uh, you can't even say that they rewrite their laws. They, they tweak their laws well, uh, to, to uh, well, try to, with, with know, Illinois, again, though, we confined. saw it in a very strong way where they, they tried to drag their feet. And finally, the members of the legislature themselves came around and did the right thing, and, and they, they established a shall-issue carry regime in the law. But I don't expect D.C. to do that. Uh, no, no, I don't either. And as you say, as you say, it was the legislature. Um, but I recall uh, one provision. I know that uh, after the McDonald decision, uh, uh, Chicago uh, City Council, I think it said that uh, you had to have a training requirement in order for you to, uh, to to register a gun in your home. There were no ranges in the city of Chicago. Uh, D.C. has the same requirement right now for for concealed carry license. You know, they want to mandate. Uh, what is it? Eight, is it sixteen hours of training and then two hours of uh, live fire uh, instruction at a local range that doesn't exist in right. the boundaries I mean, of Washington D.C. The, the number of hours they're they're asking for are incredible. Uh, you'd have to be a man of leisure with lots of money to to take the time off from work to do that. I mean that that's typical of D.C. to make one impediment after another to prevent people from trying to exercise their constitutional rights. But I can tell you there there are people who would go through with all that if they had to to get the permit, but, but they're going to be turned down because of the criteria based on some kind of exceptional need that, that nobody can establish. Talking with uh, Steve Hallbrook. So, Steve, um, December the 4th, that's when we'll hopefully get to see the uh, – uh, the district's response here. I mean, is this a, and the D.C. Uh, city leaders? I mean, they've they've not ruled out uh, appealing this decision. As a matter of fact, they're sort of taking that two track strategy, uh, where they're trying to defend their uh, theoretical carry laws while at the same time appealing Judge Scullin's decision in the first place. Right, and just another footnote about this: the December fourth filing deadline is for D.C. The plaintiffs will have. Uh, a, a reply brief that they're able to file. I think it's due about a week or 10 days after that. And then presumably the court will hold another oral hearing, and that, that could be where the fireworks really come off, and, and that should be very interesting to see what happens at that point. Yeah, it will. All right, Steve. Listen, I appreciate you coming on the program, sir. Thank you so much for your time today. and Thank you for having me. Talking Happy again very soon. Happy Thanksgiving to you, too. Steve Hallberg joined us, a Second Amendment attorney and scholar.